hey y'all welcome back to my channel so in today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different no a lot of bit different from what i'm used to recording here on my channel we're going to do a q a get to know me type of video with a bunch of random facts at the end so over on my instagram and also here on my youtube channel the community tab i asked you guys to comment a bunch of questions of things that you wanted to know about me and i'll put them all together and put them in a video like this so that's what we're going to do today and if you're watching this video and you missed asking me those questions you can still ask me something down in the comments below and i can just answer them down there so if this sounds like something you want to see and you're interested to see what people have asked and what kind of answers I give then just keep on watching so I have all the questions here on my phone and the ones from YouTube on the community tab page I have them here on my iPad and I guess I should have went back and made sure that no one asked any questions that I didn't screenshot but here we are okay so since I have my phone here in my hand we'll just start with some of the Instagram story questions so the first question says when did you start getting into polish seriously and I think it was around 2010, maybe 2009, maybe 2010. I had a coworker that used to go to RDA, one of the local places here, if you had a cosmetology license where you could get polish at the discounted price. And she would go in there and buy polish for me because around that time, the hospital created a policy that we couldn't wear false nails anymore. And that's what I had been wearing to try and grow my nails out. I know that sounds ridiculous, but that's what I was doing. But we couldn't wear false nails anymore because bacteria could harbor under your false nails and cause infection and you could pass that on to patients. So we couldn't wear false nails anymore. So since I had to grow my nails out the natural way, I wanted to start wearing polish on them because I felt like they were ugly. My cuticles were just nasty and I felt like polish would just cover that up. So anyway, she started buying polish for me from the local cosmetology license place and the more she bought, the more I wanted. And sometimes they would even give me the acrylic displays that they used in the store to display the polishes. And that's what started my obsession, my infatuation, my love for polish. So the next question says, what's the biggest risk you've ever taken? So besides life things, buying houses, cars, things like that, I think the biggest risk I've ever taken is actually starting my YouTube channel because I signed up for YouTube back in 2007, but I don't think I posted a real video until 2013 or 14. It took me a really long time to build up the confidence to get on here and even start filming. And I hate that because I lost a lot of years that I could have, you know, been building a brand, but that's just the introvert in me. I was too scared. I didn't think anybody would watch anything that I recorded. I have so many videos that I recorded back then on my little iPhone three or four or whatever it is, but I never posted them because I was so afraid that no one would care and no one would watch. But then I finally just bit the bullet and here we are. And so, yeah, as far as, things outside of the normal life things, I think starting my YouTube channel is the biggest risk I've ever taken. The next question is what made you start a YouTube channel? Well, I actually started this channel because I loved nail polish, but every time I would Google a nail polish or a nail polish collection, it never showed polishes swatched on my skin tone. So I thought, why not just make videos about nail polish? Because at the time, Instagram didn't have video service yet on their platform so YouTube was the only way to create video content as far as nail polish and there were so many accounts on Instagram that show polish swatches of someone of my skin tone or deeper but there were no videos that I could find so I thought let me just break into that world and just do it myself that way if there's anybody out there that wants to see swatches of polish on skin tone like mine here I am so yeah that's the main reason I started my YouTube channel even though I've kind of ventured out and started to want to do other things on my channel. The main reason was because I wanted to do brown girl nail polish swatches. The next question is, who did that portrait for you on your wall? It's amazing. So what she's referring to is I have a couple of murals in my nail polish room and it's of me and my daughter. Well, my nail polish room was originally my daughter's bedroom, but she graduated high school and went off to college. So I just turned that into my nail polish studio. So I'll go in there in just a second and show you what those look like. Okay, this is the painting on the wall that she was referring to. It's a picture of me and my husband's cousin drew it. Um, back when I first changed this room to a nail polish room, yeah, this is the mural that she's talking about. And in this picture, I'll try to find the picture that he used to paint this, but 
This picture is of me in one of the wigs that I used to wear. As a matter of fact, I think it was, it was this blonde one, I think. It was either the red one or the blonde one, but I think it was that blonde wig. But yep, that's one of them. And one of the other ones is, this is my daughter. And this has been in here since this was her room. I just refuse to paint over it because it's so pretty. And it just looks like she is just thinking who knows what, and I never, ever, ever want to paint over it. And there's also one here, but it's behind my TV where I have the security cameras on, but you can't really see it, but it's behind the wall here. And it's of me laying on the floor with my legs up on the wall and I'm grabbing my fro when it was big. You can kind of see a little bit, but yeah. I kind of hid that one behind the TV a bit. I don't know why I decided to put the TV there, but you can kind of see what it looks like right there. But yeah, this is the one that she's actually talking about. Another one is not a question, it's just a comment and it says, keep the positive vibes going. And that's exactly what I try to do. I don't even comment negative things. If I think something negative about someone's post or video, I just keep it to myself because I'm all about positivity, y'all. I don't like any types of negativity on any of my social media platforms. I'm just, I'm just not here for it. Okay, next question says, what is your best childhood memory? Okay, so I had a cousin that grew up with me and we're first cousins, our moms, our sisters. We basically grew up together in the same house most of our lives. So anyway, where my big mama used to live, actually out here where I live now, um, there were these trees that grew together kind of over like this. I don't know what the name of the trees are. I just know they grew together and I had an uncle that used to sleep out there. They put an old couch out there in between the trees and he would go out there to take a nap and he smoked cigarettes. So me and my cousin would go out there when he would get up and you know be roaming the streets or out with his boys or whatever he was out doing I don't know but we would go out there and pretend like we were him and that was our house and we would pick his cigarette butts up off the ground and try to relight them and smoke whatever little bit of cigarette was left on that cigarette but I don't know why that was fun to us but we just thought it was cool because our moms didn't know what we were out there doing we felt like we were getting away with something real fancy and adultish I guess she and I had a lot of memories growing up together if she watches this video she'll know exactly what I'm talking about because we did it all the time until we got busted and then we weren't allowed to go out there anymore <laughs> okay next question is I'm more interested in your recovery after ACDF surgery and how you're doing now I would love to know and possibly find hope for myself that it does get better okay I get a lot of questions on my spinal fusion surgery that I had in 2016 I'm doing really well I still have a lot of really bad headaches from it but I think a lot of the headaches stem from having high blood pressure as well. It was August 1st, 2016. But yeah, I'll have to do a more in-depth, detailed, updated video on how I'm doing after that surgery because you guys are really interested in that. I get questions about it all the time. So I'll have to do a separate video for that. Okay, next question is, are you married, single, divorced? How many kids do you have and what do you do for a living? Okay, so let's answer that. I kind of figured that I was going to get that question because most people that do these kind of videos, that's the main question that gets asked. So yes, I am married. I've been with my husband for 26 years. We've only been married for 13 years. So yes, we dated for 13 years before we actually got married. And before we got married, we actually built a house, bought cars. We did all the things that married people do before we got married. But we've been together for 26 years. I have one daughter who will be 26 this summer. Um, you've seen her in a couple of my videos. I actually need to bring her back on a couple of more videos because it seems like you guys really love it when she stands in for me in some of my nail polish videos. But yes, married, one daughter, two step kids, three step grandbabies. No grandbabies of my own, just the step grandbabies. And they call me Yaya. And as far as what I do for a living, I have a degree in science. I work in a hospital laboratory. I am a lab tech full time. This is my 20th year in the profession and I supervise 21 phlebotomists and it is the most stressful but rewarding job I've ever done in the 20 years. It's probably more stressful than rewarding though. Okay, so next question, when did your love affair with nail polish begin and how many polishes do you own? Okay, I already answered the first part of this question at the beginning of this video. And as far as how many polishes I own, I have de-stashed a lot in the last year and a half. So I think at this point I may own 
maybe around 1700 it's probably around the 16 1700 mark and that number kind of fluctuates as i de-stash or give away polishes and then i buy more polishes so the number kind of moves up and down over time all right next question what's the most interesting thing you've read or seen this week so the most interesting thing to me in the last week is all of the drama and issues surrounding diva curl hair products i just started back using diva curl products probably three or four months ago and i really got into them like for real for real and then all of these issues come up if you don't know the issue that i'm talking about there's a young lady i don't remember her name but she worked for diva curl i think and um she has made claims that over time with using the diva curl products on her own hair that she now has scalp issues and she has lost a lot of her hair her hair is thinning something like that and so she started a facebook page and so after people started hearing about it more people have started to come forward saying that they have experienced the same thing with their hair so for me i don't have a lot of products now because as I buy them, I use them up. I think the only thing I have left right now is the Build Up Buster, which goes directly on your scalp and the issue surrounding them is scalp and hair loss issues. So I may just hold on to that until we find out if these claims are true or not. And I just gave my daughter a bunch of Diva Curl products, so I'm gonna have to let her know. Keep them, but hold off on using them until we figure out if these claims on the Diva Curl hair products are true or not. So that's the most interesting thing that I paid attention to this week. Okay, next question says, how did you grow your YouTube followers? So I think that my YouTube following grew because of the new nail polish video that I posted back in 2014 or 2015. It seems like I started to gain a lot of followers after I posted that video because it just grew really fast. And I think at this point, that video may have a hundred thousand views you know to a small youtuber that's massive i think after i posted that new nail polish video that's what kind of boosted my following and it's just kind of grown little bits here and there ever since then i feel like if i were more consistent over the years that my subscriber amount or my views on my videos will be a lot higher but i'm an introvert so I record a lot of things and I have a lot of things on memory cards all over the place but I just didn't post them and I feel stupid and ridiculous for not ever posting these things but I just didn't do it but anyway I think my following grew after I posted that video of the new nail polish on brown skin next question is what is your favorite cuticle oil so I do have a favorite I'm gonna go get it so hang on a second okay this is my absolute favorite cuticle oil ever and this is a brand new one but it's from hospitality er of all places but i've been a patient there many many times and they always give these goodie bags to patients when you get discharged this was in the goodie bag that they gave me and i love it the scent of it is vanilla plumeria and it's just really really good y'all i love it and so every time i've been back to them as a patient i ask for a bottle of this or they give it to me and so i have one on the nightstand i have one at work in my locker i have one in the nail polish room i just love this cuticle oil and so before i started using that one i was using um one from pretty beautiful unlimited the indie nail polish brand and i think the scent of it was apple mango i may have a little i may have a little bit of it still left but that was what i was using before that and i also have cuticle cream from noodles nail polish and the one from sally hansen that argan oil brand that they put out i don't know the scent of it but i love that one as well but yeah overall my favorite cuticle oil comes from the hospitality er it's my absolute favorite so next question I'm gonna to try to go through these just a little bit faster next question says how old are you I'm 44 and if you're wondering I'm a cancer my birthday is in June when I tell people my age they look completely shocked but I'm 44 next question is who is your favorite youtuber and why so I remember reading this question when I first screenshotted all these questions and I had to really think about this one so my favorite youtuber overall for all purposes 
is Miss Liz Hart. The way she records her videos, the quality of her videos, the tone of her voice, I don't know what it is, but the cooking videos that she does, everything always looks so professional and I strive for my videos to look absolutely and completely professional every time I sit down to record, even though I feel like the quality of my videos is just atrocious crap, I still post them anyway. But my favorite YouTuber overall in general has to be Miss Liz Hart. And I know a lot of people are probably going to be shocked by that because you're probably thinking it's going to be a nail polish person or a natural hair person or something like that. But no, I love her videos. She inspires me, y'all. If I could pick a top three YouTubers, it would be Miss Liz Hart and then Denise from Be My Guest with Denise and then Kimberly Sherelle because her hair is just beautiful. I won't say that her hair is hair goals because I have my own hair and my own hair goals, but I love Kimberly's honesty and I just think that's the most legit thing about a YouTuber. As far as Denise, Denise has great home style too. She has helped me organize my home so much better. As a matter of fact, the DIY orchid video that I posted a couple of weeks ago or a month ago maybe, that was inspired by Denise Cooper from Be My Guest with Denise. So if I could choose my top three YouTubers, it would be Miss Liz Hart, Denise from Be My Guest with Denise, and Kimberly Sherelle. Okay, the next question is another YouTube question, which I expected that. It says, can you do a typical YouTuber video? Like a what's in my bag or a day in the life. I have actually thought about the day in the life type videos and vlogging, but I haven't really broken into that yet. Maybe, I'm not going to promise that, but maybe. I have been thinking about it though. As far as the other part, can you do typical YouTube videos like a what's in my bag? I could do a what's in my bag video. That's not an issue at all. Um, yeah, I'm going to put that together and see what I can come up with. And if there's some of you out there that have other things that you would like to see me do, leave them down in the comments below and I'll see what I can come up with. Okay, next question. Do you have a monthly nail polish budget? I actually do not. I just buy polish when I feel like buying polish. Next question is, your makeup is always so pretty. Will you ever do makeup tutorials? Y'all have asked me this before on a couple of videos and I just don't know if that's the niche for me because there's so many awesome YouTubers out there making really good makeup tutorial videos. I just don't know if that's where I want to take my channel. Now I may do something like a um, get ready with me or the makeup that I do for work, the, ten, the five or ten minute makeup type thing. But as far as doing tutorials on how I apply my makeup like consistently, I don't wear makeup like that. This what you see is what I basically do all the time. I may just change up the lip or put on some lashes, but this is what I do every time I put on makeup. I may think about doing that whole makeup for work type video, the get ready for work in less than 10 minutes type thing. I'll think about doing that, but as far as actual tutorials, that probably won't happen, y'all. Okay, next question. What do you do for fun besides paint your nails? So, I don't do a whole lot because I like being at home. And when I say I like being at home, I like being here all the time. I don't like hanging out a lot. I don't like going to clubs. I don't like doing a lot of that unless it's for a specific purpose or a specific person. Like if it's a family member's birthday party or a girl's trip with my cousins, things like that. Anything outside of that, I'm just not going to randomly say, Oh, let's just go hang out. I just, I don't do it. So what I do for fun besides paint my nails is I stay at home. And it's not like I'm being forced to stay here. I have no small children. My husband and I are empty nesters. It's always just us here. But I guess I could say I like trying different coffees and I like trying different wines. We have a really cool coffee shop here downtown that I like hanging out in. I'll go in there sometimes with my laptop to edit videos or whatnot or just chill. I like trying different coffees and I love trying different types of wines. So that may not sound like fun to most of you guys, but it's fun to me. Other than that, I don't do much because I'm a super introvert. It's not that I'm antisocial, I'm just an introvert and I get anxiety, my armpits start sweating. I just don't like being around a lot of people all the time. So 
to prevent that, I just stay in the house. Next question says, how long have you been natural? So I have been growing my hair out natural since 2013. I think that was my first big chop. Yes, April of 2013 is when I cut off all of my relaxed hair and was completely natural. And then in 2014, almost 2015, I cut it again. And then in the summer of 2015, I turned 40 and I wanted to try something different. So I got my first sew in and I had leave out. And you can imagine what happened. It was horrible. All of my leave out all through here and all around the edges, all the way around the back was just completely damaged, horribly damaged. I don't know why I let this girl do this to my hair, but it was a mess y'all. So I let it grow out for about 14 months and then I cut my hair again. And over time I have been slowly trimming my hair. If you go back and watch a couple of the hair videos that I posted on my channel, I'm always trimming my hair. When I twirl my hair after doing twists on my hair for a twist out, if the ends of them don't coil around my fingers the way that I want, I always end up cutting it. Or if I style my hair and there are pieces hanging that don't look right, I will cut them as well. And so here we are in 2020, my hair grew out so beautifully and all the red color had grown off of it. And I had this beautiful head full of hair and I decided I wanted a haircut. And not only did I decide I wanted a haircut, I wanted bangs. So here we are with my diva cut. This is probably four weeks later that I got a diva cut. I thought I wanted something and then when I got it, I realized that I didn't want it. You know, it's cute or whatever. I still have body. You know, I still have a lot of hair, but I thought I wanted this until I got it. I keep going off on these tangents with these questions, but asking me how long I've been natural just made me go back to this. So I've been completely natural since 2013. I've cut my hair many, many times, but I never had my hair professionally cut until I got the diva cut. And this is the result of that. So yeah, this April, I would have been growing out my natural hair for seven years. Okay. Last question, y'all. How different was your life one year ago? Okay, so almost exactly a year ago, I was about to make a huge career change because I felt like in the current job that I have, there wasn't anywhere for me to go. I didn't feel like I was gonna advance. And if I had, you know, 17, 18, 20 more years to work before I could retire, I felt like I needed to advance myself a little bit more because I felt like I was worth more than I was being valued. But this huge opportunity just happened to fall in my lap and I didn't have to make the career change. And by career change, I was gonna look for another job in the same career, just somewhere else. But I didn't have to do that. I was scared to do that because I had put so much time into this company that I wanted to retire from and I felt like I was being undervalued. But now I feel like I'm in the right place and this is somewhere that I can retire from. So with saying that a year ago, my life was completely different because I was about to make a huge career change, but the career changed itself for me. And I'm very, very happy with the current position that I have at my job now. Okay, so really quickly before my battery dies, I'm gonna give you guys 20 random facts about me. So it's really hard to think about random facts about yourself until you have to think about it. So it took me a couple of minutes to come up with these, but here we go. Number one, I'm an introvert. I'm a huge introvert. I don't hate people, but I get anxiety when I'm around a lot of people. My armpits sweat. It's just horrible. I've gotten better with it over time, but the fact still remains that I'm an introvert. Number two, I hate being in elevators with other people. When I'm at work and I have to get on the elevator to go up to the lab, I will wait on the next elevator to be empty so that I can go up by myself. Even if it means that I'm going to be late, I just, I can't stand it. I have too much anxiety, so I hate crowded elevators. Which goes back to number one of being an introvert. Number three, I watch cartoons every night before I go to sleep. <laughs> I love tattoos. I currently have five of them. I would love to have a full sleeve, but I can't ever decide on what elements or what pieces that I would like to have in the sleeve that are important to me because it has to mean something to me in order for me to cover my entire arm. And I haven't come up with what I wanted yet, so I haven't bit the bullet yet. And it's kind of expensive. I sleep with the TV on and the volume completely off. I got my first job when I was 12 years old and I made $2.50 an hour scraping gum off the bottom of each and every desk at an elementary school. And it wasn't even my school. I hate driving. 
I absolutely hate it. I like riding in the car, but I don't like to drive at all. I could eat avocados every single day. No matter what I'm eating, I could have them every single day. I used to bite my nails. It was a nervous response. I guess that also goes back to being an introvert and having high anxiety levels. I didn't actually start carrying a purse until I was almost 30. And I didn't actually start wearing makeup until I was almost 35. And now I'm absolutely in love with both of them. I feel like I missed out when I wasn't carrying a person wearing makeup in my 20s. That's just ridiculous. My very first concert was MC Hammer and I was 15 years old. If you don't know who MC Hammer is, just Google him. I even had the MC Hammer pants, I had the shoes, I had it all. <laughs> I didn't get my first car until I was 21 and I bought it myself. I am OCD about everything. And when I say everything, all of the forks have to be turned a certain way in the kitchen. I fold all of my underwear. My socks are all lined up perfectly. Everything has a place. And when I say that, I mean it. And my husband is on board with it. Thank goodness that he is just as OCD as I. I love being in my feelings. And don't take that wrong. That just means I love love. I love thinking about love, I love being in love, love songs, reading poems, watching love related movies. That's what I mean when I say I love being in my feelings. I hate washing dishes. I absolutely hate it. I guess because I had to wash them so much when I was a kid, I hate washing them. I'm bow-legged. It used to be a thing when I was in high school. I don't understand why people want to be bow-legged. There's people now that try to stand like they're bow-legged to make themselves look that way. But I actually am. And over the years, my legs have gotten less bowed. I guess as I get older, they kind of straighten. But yeah, I'm bow-legged. I used to think that I could sing really well. But after I had the spinal fusion and they put the plate in my neck right here, I feel like my voice has changed. And when I try to sing some of my favorite songs, I feel like I sound different. I can speak Swahili. And when I say that, I mean the most basic of basic Swahili. I have a coworker that's from Kenya and she's been teaching me little bits here and there. Let me think of something I could say really basic right quick. Um, Habari zasubuhi. Gina lango nikisha. Um, Gina lako nani. Habari yako. Karibu. How do you say, I can't remember how to say I love nail polish. I think it's Nampenda kipolishi sumari. If you speak Swahili, let me know if that's correct. Because I can't quite remember. Kwaheri. And finally, the last random fact about me is I love Wingstop. I love wings. I could eat them every single day. I probably eat Wingstop at least once a week. I'm probably going to eat there for lunch today because I'm talking about it. But yeah, guys, so that's all of the Q&A and the random facts about me. Hopefully you got to know me a little bit better. If there was something that you wanted to ask but you didn't get to ask, you can still leave it down in the comments below and I can just go ahead and answer them down there. This was kind of fun. You guys asked stuff that I didn't think I was going to get asked, but then you asked things that I knew I was going to get asked. So yeah, it was kind of fun and a little bit different for me to do on my channel. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And I thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.